It's time for pitching previews up next on Fantasy Baseball Today in Five. Welcome into FBT in Five on Monday, February 19th. I am Frank Sample, joined by Scott White. And today we're going to focus mostly on a macro level view of the position. And some strategy talk. Last year, Scott, MLB implemented new rules, shift restrictions, the pitch clock, bigger bases. It was all done with the intent to generate more organic offense. And that's exactly what we did. We saw league-wide ERA and whip jump quite a bit for starting pitchers, especially compared to 2022. How has that affected or shaped your starting pitcher strategy here in 2024? It's Blown it up, Frank. It's It's been completely revolutionary. I've never seen a pitching landscape like this before in all my years playing fantasy because, you know, during the during the juice ball era, obviously offense was, was elevated, but it was elevated in a different way. It, it was elevated in a way that didn't affect all of the ranks of pitchers so much because runs were mostly to be scored by way of home runs. So if you're a big bat misser, and if you kept the ball on the ground, if you did things to prevent home runs, you were pretty good. And, and we saw some really high-end pitching performances during the juice ball era. But now runs are being scored in ways that are that are less predictable than home runs by runners getting on base and then taking extra bases. And and just not everybody is is you know that that's harder to prevent. Um, on a universal way in a predictable way. And so like everybody was subject to these blow up starts last year where things would be going along fine maybe. And then this inning would come and, and there'd be, you know, a couple guys would reach and, and they'd be forced to maintain a high tempo because of the pitch clock and things would quickly spiral out of control. That spiral effect, that snowball effect uh, affected everybody. But while the upper ranks at starting pitcher, our expectations for them were lowered, they were still capable of those dominant starts that made up for it. I think the 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 part of the pitching ranks that suffered the most was further down, the middle class, the middle to lower class, where you know, they, they'd still have decent enough starts that you'd want to use them most of the time. But they though those decent starts weren't enough to make up for the disaster starts. And it made it so that entire class of pitching, it's like 35 to 85 in my starting pitcher rankings. They became almost random number generators. Their ERA became entirely unpredictable. It was only as good as their last start. And they did a lot of damage to whatever whatever work you may have done for your ERA and whip in a, in a Roto League, I'm talking specifically. All the good they may have done for it up to that point, then would come one of these disaster starts where things just spiral out of control and and your ERA whip would suddenly be wrecked. And, and that happened so much for that 50 starting pitcher span that I, I came to know them as the glob because – they were virtually indistinguishable from one another. They were all just very messy. And so that's the world we're operating in now because of those rules instituted last year. More base runners, more activity on the bases, and a need to keep up the tempo when things began to get out of control. And so I'm trying not to artificially elevate anyone in the glob above anyone else. I do think guys with strikeout upside because strikeouts are something you can count on in a way you can't count on ERA and whip. I think those are the guys to, uh, to pursue and to really sell out for strikeouts. Trust that if, if nothing else you can do well in that category, and hopefully by missing bats, they're going to keep runners off base and they're going to prevent some of that spiral effect anyway. But you are taking on more risk in terms of health and 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 endurance and durability um, if you do focus on those strikeout guys in that range of the rankings. So it does sound like, Scott, you want a certain number of starting pitchers before we get to that range of the draft, before, before we get to the glob. So Before we get to the glob, yeah. Fill in the blank. I want blank of my top blank starting pitchers. Four of my top 35, because I think the, about the 35 point in my rankings is where is where we descend into the glob. 
Uh, if it's a really deep league, then I may have to go for a true ace. I may even have to go for like a Garrett Cole in round one because that it, it's hard to get four from if, from that like 15 to 35 range of my rankings. But for the most part, I don't want to go for a pitcher until um, until all the MVP caliber bats are gone, which is usually uh, round three, maybe in round four. And um, that's, you know, usually I'm going to get four from like the 15 to 35 range in my starting pitcher rankings if I do that. All right. Yeah. Similar for me. I want three of my top 30. Typically, that's what I've been aiming for. If a Zach Wheeler or a Luis Castillo lasts until the third round of a 12 team league, if they fall to the right spot, I like targeting those players. If not, then I look for like a Logan Webb in round four or five, and I build around from that. I know Logan Webb doesn't get the most strikeouts, but you can complement him with other players who do get strikeouts, like Kodai Senga or Blake Snell or Cole Reagans later on in the draft. So uh, that's what I've found myself doing so far, and we'll see if it works soon enough. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye. 